Yo, what's going on everybody? Old School NYC Gamer back once again and today I'm going to be showing you the surprise console review that I promised you all a few days ago when I was on the Williamsburg Bridge. Now I've had this for about a year and a half and it has really grown quite a bit on me due to a fellow YouTuber, uh, Cubergatic1, who got me into this system. Funny thing is, this was around for a very long time but back then I couldn't afford it nor did I really even heard of it. Except when I saw it on a couple of TV shows back in the day. And, you know, recently saw this at the Classic Gaming Expo in Las Vegas back in 2007. So without further ado, everybody, here it is. And that's right, you're looking at a CGE Vectrex arcade system. Now, we will go through the console itself show you some of the stuff I have for it and get into a little bit of the history of the Vectrex for a lot of you who have uh, maybe seen it but don't know that much about it. So we'll let's go take a look at the Vectrex itself. Welcome back everybody. So as I said before, let's get into the uh, Vectrex itself here. Now as you're looking at the system itself, you see that it has a television screen. Now it is one of the first consoles to even have one of these built in within the system, which is very, uh, very advanced for the time, as where you had Pong and Atari and all these other systems, you know, this was the console itself, but you had to hook it up to the TV, whereas Vectrex is pretty much, they want to just cut the middleman and just, you know, do it all itself, like I said, being very advanced for the time. Now, the cathode ray tube is a Samsung model 240RB40 monochrome unit, and the screen itself measures 9, nine by 11 inches displaying a picture of 240 millimeter diagonal and the uh, Vector CRT display is uh, the one in the Vectrex that does not require a special tube. Now all that being, uh, if you've ever seen Asteroids or uh, Lunar Lander or even Battlezone, it has those vector graphics. So that's what mainly the Vectrex is. It just shows vector graphics, nothing like 8-bit or Atari style or anything like that. Let's go take a look at the Vectrex, everybody. So as you see right here, I'm going to pan out. As you see right there, that is a Vectrex in all its glory. Now, there's not really too much to the Vectrex itself except some of the lettering up there. Now, if we go over to the side right here, there is the cartridge port. As you see right there, I'm just using my little flashlight so you can see a little better. That's the way you would put the cartridge in. I have a, a little surface crack right there. But the uh, system still works fine. And as we turn it over, doing this with one hand here. Now the cool feature I liked about the Vectrex is if you see right there there's a little handle right there so you can just you know pick it up and take your Vectrex wherever you go. Now over here everybody is the serial number which is 076937 and this was made back in 1982. Now over here as you can see right there is the brightness uh, knob which we will tinker with as we're playing one of the games here as a quick demonstration. And down here is the power cord. Now that's about it for the system itself. We're going to show you the nice little built-in feature that the Vectrex did. If I don't break this, as you see right here everybody, that is the controller. Now you're wondering where is the actual controller itself. Well I'm going to show you if I could do this with one hand. And it actually did. And there you go, everybody. This is the Vectrex controller itself. Now, it is a uh, analog stick, as you see right there. And it is self-centering, as you see right there. And it has uh, the four buttons. You got one, two, three, and four. Now, the reason why it has four buttons is, you know, depending on which uh, overlay that you have for the Vectrex, it'll show you what you know, you need to do to play this, you know, to play the game itself. Okay, now let's get into the inner workings of the Vectrex in here. Now, let's get to put the shit a little light on here. Now you see right there, everybody, there's a, a second controller port. As you see right there, this would be the first player. Now for the second controller port, this optimized the 3D glasses, which I will also talk about more within the review, and the light pen. Now down here is your reset button, right over here, sorry guys, there is your reset button, and there is the uh, on and volume control. Now we're going to fire this up in one second, and I will show you what I'm talking about when, I'm, uh, when it comes to the brightness feature, and all that other good stuff, so we'll be right back. 
Okay, everybody, before we get into the first game here, I want to show you one of the overlays that I got with the Vectrex, and that is Mindstorm. Now, if you look right here, the, uh, as I said before earlier, these are mapped out. As you see, this is Escape, which would be number one, Thrust would be number two, and Fire would be three and four. So now, the way you would uh, put one of these on is right here, well, you can't see it, but there's two little ridges where you would put the overlay. And uh, I don't believe there's any up here, but this is how you would install one of these. Just uh, line up the line up these right here. Make sure they're fastened in, and it should pop without falling. But it should be catching on for some reason. But that's how it is put on, right there. Hopefully, it will not fall off, everybody. I don't know why it's not catching on, but that is the gist of Mindstorm. Now, when it comes to Mindstorm, it actually has a bug within the game. Now, when you get up to level 13, the game crashes. So, you know, what can you do? But there was a second revision of Mindstorm that did come out for the Vectrex, which was, uh, you know, sold separately. And, of course, if you have one of the uh, homebrew multi-carts, that, that comes with it as well. So, let's get into some of the gameplay here, everybody. I just want to show you really quick how it is. And we'll get into more of the Vectrex and any other questions you may have, I will try to ask, you know, with, as the uh, <laughs> review is going on. I'm sorry I'm a little bleh right now, but I'm trying to do the best I can. So, all right, everybody, let me just turn off the lights here. Or actually, actually, leave them on. Let's show you what uh, Maestrom looks like with the overlay. You turn it on right here. And, of course, this is the uh, most well-known thing about the Vectrex. That buzzing sound, and no, it's not broken, everybody. It's how it always was. Now, as you can see here with the Vectrex, uh, the overlays, they were color overlays, so they made it give it a little bit of that, you know, nicer look to the game. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the gameplay here, everybody. And uh, let's check out Mindstorm. And this is, uh, you know, definitely an Asteroids clone, but definitely a little different. But it still has the same premise with the thrust and fire and, you know, the uh, hyperspaces I'm going to show right here. If I can get it to go. Actually, it was number two, not number one, everybody. And this is, uh, thrust is number three. It's a quick, fun little game to play, everybody. If this is one of the only games you have, you want starting off for your Vectrex collection. Because you have some of these uh, landmines, or the mines actually coming at you, it's almost like a magnet. Never said I was the greatest Mindstorm player, everybody. Show you that I'm not. This is all smoke and mirrors. Okay. I'm going to show you that real trippy effect, everybody. If you uh, tweak the brightness all the way up. 
as you see right there, I don't know if you can see it that well, but if you see all those lines in the middle of the screen right there, gives it all like this little weird effect right there. All right, everybody, so that's about it. Let me show you uh, some of the games that I own, and we'll get into more of the Vectrex, and we'll be right back.